Carol, exciting times around measurement, a complete transformation of what, how business is being done. And uh, what do you hope we accomplished? I'm very grateful to partner with you on the series. What do you hope we can accomplish? Yeah, I think that this series uh, is so exciting because we're actually inviting all of our clients uh, across each of the verticals that they serve, whether it's buy side, sell side, um, how the you know, core uh, third party uh, groups uh, interplay with the process of, of having a, a TV and cross platform measurement. So I think that this series will help unlock all of the challenges our clients are having as we head into 2021, where truly uh, TV as we know it will never be the same and neither will its currency. So I think these are very exciting times and you're gonna hear that in the series. And so Comscore is really uh, proud to sponsor this with Beat TV and uh, really listen to what our clients have to say. Fantastic. Carol, a lot of conversation about addressability. Uh, and of course that's changed from the MVPD is in the household cable box to devices and so forth. Um, what are the challenges in having a currency around addressability uh, and how you define addressability and sort of what Comscore's approach is to solving that? Thanks, that's a great question. So I think addressability is probably the hottest topic in the uh, industry today and how each uh, measurement company is approaching that. It's, it's very different. So from Comscore, if you really think to our television routes, uh, we started our, our uh, measurement offering in partnership with MVPDs where we've taken their return path data, we've processed it and uh, cleaned that data aggregate it and then provide uh, a, a really robust um, and granular service that's tied locally to nationally. So addressable today is really the purview of the MVPDs on um, television. And Comscore has been measuring that since 2012. So we have like eight years of experience in uh, providing precise, exact commercial ratings to their addressed ads. So our view for a national addressable, expanding just the local purview and taking it into a national is to keep uh, consistent with that MVPD approach, aggregate it so that uh, the you know, sell side and buy side can actually see the uh, delivery of addressable ads with the same metrics and methodology to measure uh, the standard delivery of linear plus the address, whether you're looking at it from a local or national perspective. And I think that that's a unique methodology that we're the only folks in the industry that can provide. So we're very excited about that. So uh, how do you think the whole addressability from the programmer side is gonna develop? That's something that we've been speaking to a lot of folks about. What, what, what's your thoughts on the prospects of that? Well, I think um, there's a huge amount of interest in it, but it's also uh, the devil's always in the detail. So it's a technological challenge that each programmer has to work out with each NVPD or each connected TV provider. And then they have to be able to understand what is the value of that inventory and then how, how that plays out with, um, with their standard form of measurement. With the move to impressions, I think addressable fits more into the cross-platform view. And I think that we'll see that uh, come through. So I think that one of, the, uh, one of the, the biggest challenges for the programmers is, is the under-addressed piece of uh, addressable. So if you get the addressed house going in, but you have the rest of the market uh, that receive the uh, standard ad or the linear ad, that is breaking the C3 measurement that is the currency today. And as we move forward with an impressions-based currency, it, it is um, much more likely and, and, and capability of, of Comscore to produce that measurement with the same precision that we produce uh, exact commercial ratings today. Carol, I wanted to ask about the um, partnerships that Comscore has uh, in terms of the data space because um, uh, you know, it, it had been the Rentrack software, and of course, Comscore has had its own software on the digital side for many years. Now you're partnering with Comcast, with 
uh, Samba TV. Uh, tell us about some of those partnerships and why they matter. Yeah, I think, uh, great question. Thank you for asking, Andy. I think that the uh, announcement that we did in February of 2020 uh, with the Comcast data, we are adding their return path data to our television measurement. And that comes in in broadcast January, 2021. So in that you know nine month basically period, we have incorporated this and we'll be rolling out that measurement and it's kind of the last hurdle to get to a true kind of census-like measurement and having every major MVPD in the country provide uh, return path data into our measurement. And I think that that really is changing uh, the marketplace. And to, to actually enhance that, Comscore also came out with its own Comscore markets definition. And I think that is like a big change and while Nielsen made changes regarding what is included in their household definition and markets definition in terms of universe estimates, you know, television is never going to be the same. There's never going to be an, uh, an ability. The uh, January 2021 is, a, is going to be a break. Uh, and so in trendability. So I think it's a, um, you know, we're really on the precipice of the horizon of what the future is going to be. And I think Comscore is going to play a big part of that. Now we talk about our connected TV. We realize that the marketplace is moving to a um, you know unwired world, if you will, with OTT and the uh, the proliferation of connected TVs in the marketplace. Uh, we were very excited to expand our connected TV universe by announcing our Samba TV deal earlier. Uh, well, I guess it was in in, in September. So not only do we have access to that data in the U.S we have um, launched our television capabilities uh, globally with that uh, announcement. Great, great. And um, finally, uh, some thoughts uh, about our industry, the, what we've been talking about, how things have accelerated through COVID, through the lockdown. Uh, there's been a lot of changes around television. What's some of your perspective? Yeah, I think that, um, first of all, I'm so impressed with the industry as a whole and our ability to stay connected, to continue to provide you know, uh, the content uh, and the continuity of uh, television, whatever form that is, uh, on whatever platform or whatever, whatever screen. I think that uh, we, we have done a good job in providing uh, the people around the world content that's needed during this crisis. Um, so, the, ads, uh, the ad industry has been hit hard. Many of our clients have been hit hard. No, no doubt that uh, the, the lasting impact of uh, COVID-19 will go uh, for years. However, I think it's also uh, kind of given a rebirth, if you will, uh, a, a new and uh, delivered appreciation of the, of the uh, technology that's come out. We see all of the streaming services being launched, uh, we see continued growth. I think some of the interesting uh, insights that we've seen from, from our measurement data sets is that the, the, uh, the AVOD services are, are growing at a faster pace than uh, the, the paid uh, SVOD services. So I think, think that, you know, that, gives, uh, that gives a lot of faith to the, uh, to the advertising uh, industry that we're still connected. I think content will always be king. And so people are gonna to tune to the services that have uh, the best content and provide the niche services that uh, you know, the diversity of uh, the population is looking for. So I, I think that that is an exciting time uh, to be involved right now.